Hi everyone, welcome. I am so thrilled today to be here with Jonathan Chung, designer, innovator, and self-proclaimed denim geek. <laughs> um, Jonathan's amazing career uh, has been working with fashion legends like Franco Moschino, you've worked with Giorgio Armani, and then you've spent over a decade in design leadership at Levi's. And we're so happy to have you here today. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you very much, Anne. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here today and, um, and talking about things, uh, fashion and sustainability. One of the biggest shifts, and possibly the biggest shift, is the awareness around sustainability, right? And once something, once you become aware of something, you can't unthink it, you can't unsee it, right? So now that people are aware of sustainability, uh, unaware of the impact our, the human species has on the environment and the world and our climate. Uh, and as we kind of click that down into fashion, fashion's impact on the environment and the climate. Now that we are aware, our expectations around sustainability have fundamentally changed and will increasingly change uh, to the future, in the future. I, I think sustainability is, is almost no longer a nice to have, but it's kind of table stakes. So, you know, an entry point, a baseline for, for brands to be successful in the future. Very, very important. And then, um, you know, in terms of the future, I also think brands need to make sure uh, they have product and, and uh, brand identities that are different you know, that stand out now that we live in a world of ubiquity, unless you think you can compete on being the cheapest and most convenient, um, then you're going to have to stand out. So if we get back to your question, you know, what does the future look like? Then what does a better version of ourselves mean in the next decade? Then I really think you need to stand with good social values and sustainability being very important to those. You have to make products that have meaning, make them different and special, and keep in mind the, the, the kind of afterlife of, of these products as well through reselling, uh, vintage, recycling, whether you're recycling the actual garment, so you're upcycling the, the garment, you're repairing it or you're customizing it, or you're breaking that garment down into components and recycling the material, which is you know, where infinite fiber comes in. Are we in. coming in, yes? Yes. So um, I asked around, I was really curious to know what, what, what people wanted me to ask you. And one of the things that came up, and I, I'm gonna read it now, was, a re was related to the, the design process. Uh, and the fact that 90, it's been said that 90% of the impact of a garment can be caught at the design decision-making point. For example, changing materials to, for example, sustainable raw materials. So I'm just thinking now with everything you've said uh, and thinking about the, the perspective you have when you start your design process, how much do you consider the, the material footprint in the design decisions? And uh, how do you see the potential of new materials? Right, that's, that's a great question. So materials and design all often come hand in hand and there's no specific um, like um, formula in terms of what goes first. You know, does the idea come first or the materials come first? Sometimes you, you might be trying to solve a problem like how do I make something more comfortable or more stretchy or, or uh, behave in a different way in a hot climate or a cold climate, you know, and that leads you to the material or you might discover a new material and then go, oh, that would be great to solve this mm -hmm. problem, right? So that can come in, in, in a different order, um, depending on what gets, you know, what inspires you first. Um, so I think, you know, traditionally the, the, the criteria that uh, a designer would look for in, in a material would be durability and um, comfort. So those two things would define kind of quality. And of course, aesthetic, right? Whether it, it looked good as well. Um, and then as a commercial designer, you know, all designers will feel this, 
the price, right? So <laughs> there'll always be some kind of price constraint, you know, and, and that's the, I guess that's the interesting thing about designers. It's, um, I remember speaking to someone at Google um, who told me a designer is an artist that can work within constraints. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, so I think increasingly sustainability is, is moving into, um, into being one of those major considerations, you know, along with durability and comfort and aesthetics. I think increasingly uh, it, it, it is becoming that. And also increasingly, which is, which is nice to know, is we are finding out that people are willing to pay for that as well. And, and maybe even better is they're becoming um, averse to buying product that doesn't have that kind of um, mindset, you know, uh, within the product. So when thinking about these new materials, you know, these kind of regenerative materials like infinitive fiber uh, or, or biofabricated like lab grown materials, what I think the opportunity is, uh, I think the first kind of horizon for these materials is to replace um, existing materials, right? So to replace cotton or replace wool or replace silk mm -hmm. um, or replace um, viscose. So that is the kind of first horizon. And then what gets super interesting is the second horizon is like, okay, now we have something that kind of can replace cotton. Uh, how can we go beyond that and make it a, a super material, right? So how can we have, give that product things that cotton doesn't have, that, that are better than cotton? So better thermodynamics, you know, better mm -hmm. comfort, uh, better strength, better stretchability, things like that, right? So in the past, we, what we've done is we've mixed fibers to achieve that type of performance. So uh, in a pair of jeans, we might have cotton and put some polyester in to make it stronger, put some um, spandex in to give it some stretch, things like that, right? Um, and maybe some other things to help like the thermodynamics, either to make it warmer or cooler. Mm -hmm. uh, with with these new materials, you, we might be able to, and I, I, well, I feel very confident that we will be able to engineer them to give them profiles that that um, give them kind of superpowers. So I think the future is very, very exciting for all these, as well as the sustainability, um, the problem solving that they do. And with Infinited Fiber, the thing that really um, attracts me is one, it, you know, kind of unlike a lot of these regenerated fibers, it, it, it feels like a natural fiber. You're, you, you, you feel it and you're going, oh, is this silk? Is this cotton? Is this, you know, because it has that, um, natural unevenness to it you know which um i remember petri telling me that you know that's part of the kind of urea process that you put into it and the and that kind of like kidney shaped profile that you have in, in the fiber which is amazing and then the other thing is that with infinited fiber it's the kind of the materials that can go in to 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 produce that new material which is old clothing so you know that solves a big problem old clothing can become new clothing cardboard boxes another thing i don't know about you but you know my my, my bin night was was last night and one of my bins as usual is full of um kind of cardboard boxes you know and, and waste paper and that's a huge thing and you know a technology that can solve that problem is uh, amazing and then the the third one that you told me about Anne, was the um the kind of agricultural waste as well mm -hmm. That, that could be a feedstock for it. So it, I, I almost feel like it's some kind of like magical Willy Wonka type solution, right? Where you can go, okay, I'm going to drop off my old clothing or, and some food waste and my cardboard boxes, things that are filling my bins now. And magically they become like the, my new t-shirt or my new jeans. So I think it's speaking, speaking incredible. Of my, my new t-shirt, what I'm wearing right now is made with infinitive fiber. Oh, what it, one? <laughs> I, I was gonna. I, we wanted to send you one, but but unfortunately, there have been delays because of the the pandemic and the the postal system and deliveries, and we couldn't get things out in time. But uh, yeah, this is uh, a fifty fifty blend. Wow! And it it really you know, if you were here to to you know touch it, you would say this is identical 
almost identical to to wow. regular cotton t-shirts. Well, you are wearing the future, and there will be many more of those t-shirts in the future. Yeah, it's it, it's exciting, and it, it the color is great too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks great. Hey, so last time you and I spoke, we talked. You know, I shared the the situation um, or the moment that that I had when we were exhibiting at Premier Vision in Paris, and we had lots of of students of of fashion design and and apparel design that were visiting our stand, and they were really they were like so interested in what we were doing. And I have to say, I, I had so many lively and engaging conversations with these young people. What, but what they said to me is that, you know what, we, we needed to come seek you out because we're not getting the, you know, when it comes to sustainability in our design, you know, school curriculums, it's still off to the side. It's not really, you know, central to, to our whole education. And, and that leads me to the question when it comes to, you know, thinking about your peers in the industry, you know, you're obviously thinking about sustainability, you know, everything that you just said, um, you know, I'm wondering how many of your peers, you know, how important is this to, to the design community? Are, are you, you know, a one-off or is this something that's sort of resonating through, through the design community? And, and it would be good to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I'm definitely not a one-off, you know, I've been influenced by my peers, you know, and the, the sort of teams around me as well. I think a, a lot of people are, are like, like these students, you know, feel and see all, all these issues around sustainability and want to make a change and want to get involved. So I think there's a lot of um, positive peer pressure to do that. And a lot of my peers uh, in the industry definitely think this way, you know, a shout out to Miles Johnson, uh, an mm -hmm. ex colleague of mine who worked at Patagonia, who I know is that, you know, doing a lot of good work and education around uh, the sustainable space as well. So, yeah, I think, I think it's, um, I think it's definitely growing. Right. And I, I think it's definitely established now in, I would say even mainstream companies, mainstream high volume companies, you know, we see the, the work that um, H&M are doing and mm -hmm. then you see CEO coming from a sustainability background as well. So, you know, I think there's a lot to uh, applaud and admire there as well. So it's, it's definitely there. I think in terms of, of education, it's probably the kids as usual are ahead of the adults, you know what I mean? And I think that that will follow in education, you know, where, where there's a demand, um, there will be solutions to, to meet it. So um, it will happen, you know, and, and, and I think where the kids uh, uh, that you met, um, the kids, um, I mean, the, the amazing young, you know, designers that you met in Premier Vision um, are at is at that moment of change, at that moment of shift, you know, so they are at the generation that are kind of leading the shift, but not a recipient recipients of the ship mm -hmm. so they are actually pioneering this for their you know the the people that come after them so thank thanks to them yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah good job so i think we have time for one more question and uh well i'm i'm just looking through here you talked about the um the that design is fundamentally about understanding people you talked at, uh about the, the trends in society. And now I'm just thinking, we talked about students and, and I, I'd say like, if you put yourself now, let's say you're talking to your 20 year old self and, yeah. and what would you tell, what would you tell your 20 year old self today? Oh, wow. Uh, uh, don't worry. Everything will be all right. I think, <laughs> you know, what would that design brief be? It, it, uh, trust in, Jonathan. <laughs> right. To trust in, trust in your instinct, but stay curious, stay persistent. You know, those two things are the most important qualities that will lead you to future success. I would say, um, stay curious about learning about human nature, uh, what makes us tick, you know, and I, that's advice I would give to any young designer because, it, the, the more you understand, you know, people, and it's what Steve Jobs says, the more you understand humans uh, and human nature is the better designers you will be. So to keep like reading, read um, philosophy and read social psychology, you know, uh, 
I have like Charlie Munger's Almanac next door and books <laughs> like Inf Influenced by Robert uh, Cialdini. Uh, they're really good places to start. And then the other piece of advice I would give is to use this um, shortcut in, in ways of thinking and think about trends as escalators. And you have escalators going up and escalators going down, right? And look at those macro trends. So things like sustainability or health and wellness, they are escalators going up. So if you were to design a product that had sustainability and health and wellness, so it might be a an active wear brand or a lounge wear or yoga wear brand, right? That had sustainability built in, you're probably going to go up. If you're looking at something like, let's think top hats, right? <laughs> top hats, like for a wedding, you know, and you think, oh, is that an escalator going up or down, right? And you think, well, I don't think many people wear top hats anymore, not even to weddings, right? So maybe it's a bad idea, you know, if you're going to put a lot of time into like designing a top hat brand, you know, so in that shortcut, what it means is, you're maximizing your upside. So picking things that have a potential to, to have exponential growth. Mm -hmm. And you're, by jumping on the escalators going up, and then by getting off, so it's really important to get off any escalators going down, it means you're minimizing your downside. So you're minimizing your potential losses. So anyone that's in the, I guess, startup business or venture capital will, will understand that very well, but it, it definitely applies to design as well. So look for those escalators going up, and look for those escalators going down. And then I would say apply the formula. And it's a formula that you actually, before we started recording this, you know, and I asked you about how you would pitch um, Infinited Fiber. Mm -hmm. it, it's a formula that I would say, I would definitely tell a 20 year old me, right? And that is to apply this formula to any idea, any, any project pitch, you know, um, anything really. Uh, so what problem does it solve? Uh, paint the picture. Why tomorrow will be better than today because of this idea of this product? Why is this idea or product different, right? Because if it, if it fails that, it means somebody's already done it and there's lots of them out there, right? And then the last one, why should anyone care about it? So to repeat that, what problem does it solve? Why tomorrow will be better than today? Why is it different and why should you care? So I would, um, yeah, give those, those recommendations to a 20-year-old me. Those are great words. <laughs> and perfect closing. Thank you so much, Jonathan. It's really been a pleasure. It's, it's um, been great to have you join our event and, and to hear, you know, your words and get all of these insights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you um, to, you know, your, your entire crew, Petri and Kiersey and uh, Ali Harlin, the, the genius who I've yet to meet, but I admire from a, you know, from a distance. Um, yeah, good luck. These are very interesting times, but I would say let's be optimistic about the future. I think with, with this generate Gen Z coming online, they're amazing. And then with technologies like, the te like Infinited Fiber as well, it, it's definitely a glimpse to a much more positive future, a magical future. And hopefully we're seeing you in San Francisco sometime Definitely. soon. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be great. Have a great rest of the week. And okay, thank you, you again. Too. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.